Welcome to the very first episode of He's Been Doing It All Day. Welcome, Adam. Welcome, Simon. The AFL Footy Podcast. Yeah, the recap. It's the only footy podcast you'll need in your life. Yeah, it's going to be in your ears every Monday morning after the round. Yep. It'll give you all the info that you need. Probably not backed up by stats, but (laughs) definitely opinions. Oh, heavy on the opinions. Heavy on the opinions. We've got producer Justin is here as well. Hello, Simon. How are you, Justin? Hello, Simon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two and a half man podcast, uh, two and a half man show, two and a half man show. Yeah, but we should kick right into it. So yep. today's show, and like every show, we'll have a recap of each game. Then we're going to have a bit of a chat about the round that was. Then we're going to run into a few spicy takes, and we've got a big interview with Hugh McCluggage, who's a superstar. I love that this episode is going to have training wheels on the whole way because yep. we're explaining it to everyone else what's about to happen next. So they're yep. like, oh, "What's going to happen next? All right, we'll tell you." And then we've got Don't an worry. award. Yeah. Well, We're going to find out. The start of an award. Who's been doing it all day? Who's been doing it all day? Who's been doing it all day? All right, but we should kick it off. Yeah. Round two. First game of the round, Richmond versus Collingwood, MCG Thursday night. Footy is back, baby. But not really because it looked like two under 10s teams playing with each other. No one could kick. No one could hand pass. There was like people just <laughs> running and chasing the ball. Guys, we've got positions here. They grounded out, Mortar versus a Pestle, and for two teams that should be at the top of the ladder, it was a very underwhelming start to football for round two. 36 all draw, Magpies, Richmond, can't split them. Geelong versus Hawthorne, traditional blockbuster, absolute flop of a game. Didn't hear a single second of commentary apart from the fact that they kept saying that GMHBA Stadium is narrower than the MCG. We get it, guys. No crowd also meant no feral Cats fans, which is always a win for society. Gary Ablett looked like he's been eating only 4-20 and 20 pies during the whole break, but it really didn't matter because he absolutely dominated. The Cats wiped the floor with the poos and wheeze after halftime. Cats take it by 61. Brisbane versus Fremantle, match of the round. Your boys, Brisbane. (laughs) Brisbane, who some call the greatest team ever, hosted the Dockers at the Gabba and Charlie Cameron pretty much had his own footy for the entire first half. It was like watching the 12-year-old kid with a five o'clock shadow play against kids half his size. He had four in the first half and was only outshadowed by debutant Tom Berry, who took a Jonathan Brown-style hanger in the last minute of the game, running back with the flight. We won't mention the tab and a mark, not paid in the square, because there's no pictures on the scorecard. Lions take it by two goals. Back in Melbourne, we had the Blues versus the Demons. Early on, Carlton did what Carlton do, and they just broke their, broke their supporters' hearts early on, early on, going down to a massive lead for the Demons in the first quarter, only for Melbourne to do what Melbourne does and toss it all away. Three months off for all parties, gave all supporters renewed hope, only to watch round two and go, oh, that's right, I broke for Carlton. Oh, <laughs> that's right, I broke for the Demons. Cade Simpson picked up his 7,000th touch and for 326 games, it's 21 touches a game, not bad. Resulted in an absolute nail-biting finish with both teams having an opportunity to win by any points. Melbourne came away with the lead. One point, Melbourne by one. Port versus Adelaide. It's the showdown, baby. 2,240 people were let into the ground. Port wore their prison bars Guernsey. Their supporters wore their prison release jumpsuits. Koshy would have been celebrating as much as he does when the Dow Jones hits a month-long high. Whoa. (laughs) Xavier Dersma, who's now going to be called Robin Hood, whipped out the bow and arrow three times. Travis Boak won the showdown medal. Port play lights out and absolutely dominate the Crows, who are shortening by the second for the wooden spoon. The margin, a record-breaking 75. Back in the Sunshine State, we had Gold Coast versus West Coast where West Coast played like Gold Coast and Gold Coast played like West Coast. (laughs) Rowell in his second game, dominant force, 26 touches, absolutely beasting people in the middle, made it look like he was playing against school children. The Gold Coast coming away with a very, very surprising 44-point dominant win. My boys, the Roos versus GWS. Early morning flight with the Bombers would have been painful enough. We had to go to Sydney. That's double painful. It was a tough day for the Roos early on, but grinding and grinding and grinding. Ben Cunnington, another stellar performance. Cam Zerha, the bull, absolutely dominating the physical contest. The Kangaroos kicking away right at the end, 20-point victors. Greatest team on earth. (laughs) (laughs) P.S. Greatest team on earth. Hot, hot, hot (laughs) favourites early on in the season. Swans versus Essendon. 
The Bombers caught the 5am flight up to Sydney and sat on the half of the plane opposite the Kangaroos and then they sat in a hotel conference room for three hours before they could go to the SCG. If I were them, I probably would have just copped the loss and had to sleep in. Typical dogfight at the SCG. <laughs> ugly footy, short 50s and a final margin of a single goal. It was like watching the old Eagles versus Swans game of the early 2000s. It's only a good game because it's close. Somehow the Bombers tried to lose, but they ended up taking the game and they now sit 2-0. and And the last match of the season, the Saints versus the Dogs at Marvel Stadium. It's currently in progress as we're recording this. The Saints just literally kicked one. Five goals, 232. <laughs> literally just this. Literally. Live update. <laughs> this just Live. in. I know you're probably going to be listening to this on Monday, but the Saints just kicked a goal. It's now 5-2 <laughs> to 2-4. They're leading by 16 points. Mate, in 2020, we are new media. People are going to be listening to footy. I just want footy updates. <laughs> Live. Told to me a day late. That's what I want. Doesn't, That's how I want to consume my footy now. Doesn't everyone get their footy scores from podcasts? Yeah. <laughs> a, a day late. A day <laughs> late. That's what I'm doing. So the, Swa- the Saints are leading by 16 points against the Dogs. We're nine minutes 30 into the second quarter. We'll keep you updated throughout the whole thing. But, Simon, what do you think of the round? Round two. One word came to mind. Weird. Haircuts for me. Haircuts? <laughs> Mate. Peroxide. <laughs> there are some bloody haircuts getting around. That's a real error. The error by the... Um, National government, the national cabinet, was to open haircuts or open hairdressers before starting footy back because there are some stinkers. <laughs> I heard it so, today described as people who, because there's a lot of mullets going on out there. Yep. They described them as, geez, that bloke's got a good exhaust pipe. Very good. <laughs> I like Very that good. one. The problem with the mullets, they're too faded on the side. There's yeah. too much fade on the side. So it's not 80s mullets where you're looking like, Jesus, mullets like Vandahar and stuff. Like Wayne Carey mullet. Yes. You just want the curls and you're like, this is just where my hair grows. It's yeah. just shorter. They're like, nah, this is trendy mullet. I actually have a, the first spicy take for you. Oh, yep. Ben Cunnington's hair regrowth oh, is the sh- biggest comeback since Ooh. Essendon came back from 69 points down to beat the Ruse. It is phenomenal. I was looking at that today. He is and back in the game. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Mate, he must be seeing the same hairdresser as LeBron James. <laughs> it was literally gone. I know. Normally you sit like normally if you're balding, shave the head and you're like, oh well that guy's done then. He's gonna be bald for the rest of his life. Ben Cunnington has gone, uh uh-uh, uh, I'm no, coming bro. back. Mate, I'm young, I'm wealthy, I'm gonna have hair. Yeah, and I play AFL. And you know what? Good on him. He's also done it. He's got it back, but he hasn't done anything to it. No, yeah. he's still from the. Yeah. He's still Ben Cunnington. <laughs> yeah. It's the same length all over. Yeah, Isn't that? Odd. I feel like that's the biggest twist in that whole story is that Ben Cunnington wasn't happy going bald. Yeah, because Ben Cunnington didn't just shave his head and go. Oh, I'll just shave it. Don't worry, no worry. I feel like the haircut he has now requires a haircut, which yeah. is more work than just shaving his head. <laughs> oh, yeah, which is the most anti Ben Cunnington thing that has ever happened. There were also a couple of absolutely controversial umpiring decisions over the weekend, mate. Starting on the first game, yep. yeah, Richmond Magpies. Mark Jack Higgins, over or under? What do you think? Was it over the line? Uh, as in, was it a point or did he mark it? Yeah. I think he marked it. It was a mark. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was a mark too. Yeah. It oh. was like a, it was a thick, fat pole and then the footy, even when it comes out, wasn't like it wasn't the whole footy. Yeah, footy wasn't over. That's the rule. Whereas the Tabina one, he didn't mark that. Oh, t- uh, as a line supporter, he definitely didn't mark that. <laughs> yeah. no. I don't think he marked it. <laughs> I'll die on that hill. <laughs> I'll die on that You'll hill. You'll be alone on that hill because I think he definitely marked it. Do you reckon the – um? How much do you think the umpiring decisions were affected by the no crowds? Ah, interesting. I reckon big time. Yeah, I think big yeah. time too. Mm. There were a couple of – there was, again, in the Geelong-Hawthorne game. Yeah. In the back, it was given in the back in the forward 50. It definitely should have been holding the ball. And then there's been by, a lot because of because the crowd wasn't there to sway the umpire's decision. Yeah. That's why. I'd probably say there's been more no calls – yeah, without that's the, a without the crowd. Mm. That's They're like point. pushing the backs don't get called, less holding the balls, the marks aren't being paid because yeah. the crowd's not going up, yeah. the voice of affirmation. What do you think about this for an idea, guys? So they've got the digital crowd, they've yep. got fake crowd on in the background, and it does go up and down a little bit. Like it kind of if there's – but it doesn't go like a big – there's no big ball yeah. and there's no big I miss in that. the back or whatever. No but either. it goes up for a bit of like a cheer. What do you think? They have the general crowd noise buzzing away. Mm-hmm. And then each club gets to nominate one supporter who's got five buttons in front of them. And they can hit a ball, goal, 
like a, I want a free kick in or like back. in the back. Like they've got five things that they can hit. Do you know what one of the buttons the crowd is? crowd is recorded. One of the buttons is, he's been doing it all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, that is perfect. Yes. yes. But one of the buttons need to just like, and then it just fires off like a big ball Boom. because that's exactly, you want a booing one. The umpires aren't going to hear it, so it's not negative for them. No. It just yeah, adds a bit of atmosphere. Crowd. I've genuinely missed the the balls. Yeah. Because, like when you go to the game, the ball can be sometimes annoying if it's clearly not ball, but not having it in there just made me realise how much I miss it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just you need that ebb and flow of like the crowd energy and because, I mean, the season's already really weird. The yeah. players are playing really weird. I mean, it's weird really enough weird. because Gold Coast beat West Coast. That's what I mean. Smashed Gold them Coast. too. It's Gold so Coast. weird. <laughs> so weird. Justin is a – producer Justin is a, a closet sh- – uh, Suns fan? I'm a big big time Suns man. Big right. time Suns man? Give me a spell. He's actually wearing a Suns So much right so that one of my mates last night he sends around a photo. He bought a uh, a Suns membership after the win. Oh, really? <laughs> no <laughs> way. For our other mates at New Dog, he got a pet membership. <laughs> yeah, Young Hang. And he sent around straight on the photo and we're all like, go the bloody Suns. <laughs> go the go bloody Suns. Unbelievable. What'd you think of Raul? Oh, mate, he. He's a weird. You reckon he's the real deal? Oh, what do you think of his jumper? Yeah, he's he got would. the pinched shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind it. His trapezoids are just, they're huge. Yeah. But that's the thing, he's wearing the same jumper as everyone else, but it looks different because his traps are enormous. He's 18 and he is bursting out of his jumper. He's, he's a weapon. It's abnormal that he's that big. Someone it's, said last time that he had, in his first game, he had 158 ranking points or something. Uh, and Walsh last year, I think his top was 140. I think something. on the game against West Coast, he had like 177. Yeah, he's... Unbelievable! Yeah, he's he's legit. He's the real deal. He kind of looks um, too strong. (laughs) Like he's going against grown men, been in the system for four or five years, and just torched them. And he's not even that tall. But he's also um, like a man of my complexion who is not built for the sun, (laughs) who lives on the Gold Coast, who has put up with a summer of preseason training in the sun. Yep. And he's still dominant. Has he got a zinc cream spono? <laughs> sure. He should. The, the big chat was getting a banana boat sunscreen. He definitely needs to get some sort of yeah. like, yeah, he definitely needs some sort of. It's thing. good. Imagine if Gold Coast make the finals. They're going to. I'm calling it. Yeah, there you go. Much. That's my favourite part about round two footy. Everyone's going real early with your call. What's your early call? My early call is Adelaide for the wooden spoon. Adelaide wooden spoon? Yeah. Show? Sons of Justin? Yeah. Suns will meet all the bad teams. I don't. They can't beat all the good teams, but they'll no. beat all the bad teams. No, my um, my early call, Gary Ablett Jr. is back. Brownlow medal in his final year. Not Brownlow, but he's gonna he's gonna kick fifty goals. All Australian then. Yeah, I think he make all Australian. There I think he'll go. kick upwards of forty goals because they're just gonna play him half forward the whole time. Yeah, I reckon they'll leave him there. He'll pinch hit in the midfield. Do you think that's why he ate all the pies? Oh, they actually, I heard something this morning that he's like he's put on weight on purpose so he can play forward. To just be oh, a bigger boss. Yeah. So oh, good yeah. attack. That is a great tactic. So he's like, yeah. That's so. when I used to play, I used to pretend that I couldn't run. I was like, geez, I'm not fit enough. Be like, no, play forward. He, <laughs> he's not putting on weight to be unfit. He's doing it just so he can't he's get like, pushed so, up. Sorry, Scotty. I can only play the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mate. Skin folds have gone up yeah. now. And uh, also, I reckon I'll be staying in here. Scotty's beard? Yeah or no? Oh. Scotty's anything? Uh, no. Mate, triple premiership Brisbane player. He's uh, mate, always got a special yeah. place in my heart. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think about the beard? Uh, it's very manicured. Josh Kelly's got a good beard. Yeah. Nah, I mean, I don't rate any of the Giants' beards at the moment. Why? Cogs has got it. Cornelio's got a beard as well. I just reckon not that good. Mate, they're all living in Sydney, mate. They're mm. like Melbourne, about three years late in fashion. <laughs> <laughs> beards Hi-oh. are done, boys. Hi-oh. Beards are done. <laughs> beards are done. Also, there was a few um, There was a few guys in West Coast rocking the West Coast mullet. Yes. That thing's been going around since Ben Cousins. Yeah, that's playing. never gone out of fashion. Just like a long semi-rat yeah. tail sort of business. That's not back in fashion because it was never out of fashion. Well, not in Perth anyway. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Shout out to all our Perth <laughs> <laughs> Got that. Got that. <laughs> Episode one. Up next is our first interview and uh, it's a good one. It's the best player in the league. So caveat, Adam Barracks for <laughs> Brisbane <laughs> and he's got a mini statue uh, of humour cluggage yeah. sitting on our desk right now. So I'm our first guest is Brisbane Lions a league-wide superstar, robbed of the Brownlow medal last year, absolute soon-to-be legend of the game, Hall of Fame for sure, Hugh McCluggage. No bias in there at all from you, Adam. <laughs> no pressure for you too, Hugh. No pressure on that intro. How are you, mate? How are you feeling after round two? 
Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Feeling feeling good. Um, obviously good to get the win. And yeah, we, we made it a bit tough for ourselves there, but the first game back, um, it's good to get it out of the way. More importantly, though, Hugh, you are our first guest, and uh, you definitely don't know because you're not here, but we have a statue of you because you are the uh, the statue. What's the... Well, you're Adam's, um, you're Adam's un, unfiltered favourite player. He tells everybody that you're going to win a Brownlow one day, so congratulations for that. <laughs> so now we've got a statue front and centre on the on the work desk that is of you. So we're I'm looking at you as I speak to you is basically what I'm saying to you. <laughs> Um, How good is that? Question is, is it weird? How do they even make these statues? Do they have to, like, take a body scan of you? What's the setup? The little mini ones, yeah. is it? Or, yep. Yeah. We – I think we had to do a scan, like, when we first got drafted and then they, they must just use that one still. So it's not doing me too many favours. I've, I've changed a bit since then. I was going to say, hopefully they put a couple of couple of centimetres on the arms or something. Yeah, I know. They need to do something, get the, get the chest out a bit. I was – Little scrawny kid when I when that was done. So, do you? Uh, yeah, it's looking a bit bigger now. Huey, do you get to party after the game? Because I'm assuming that normally after you win a game, uh, you would be able to go out to the pubs, head down to Fortitude Valley and Brizzy, and, and have a couple of pots. What do you get to do after the game with the current climate? Well, at the moment she's pretty um we're pretty tied up with all the protocols and stuff. But obviously Tommy Berry played his first game and. We live with him, so we had a couple of beers um, after the game just at home to celebrate that. But it sort of depends. If you if you have a seven or eight day break, you you can go out and have a couple, or um, you know just just relax a bit. A six day break's a little bit different or anything shorter because you got to recover. But um, yeah, you, you might see a few of the boys down in the valley uh, every now and then during the season. Which what Charlie was- Charlie Cameron will be in there doing his motorbike. On the <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? Tom Berry first gamer gets a win. What was he like around the house? He would have been a pest, surely. Yeah, mate, he's that excited. You could you couldn't get a word out of him before the game. <laughs> I've never seen someone look that nervous, but um yeah, he's he was actually running around calling himself Brownie after that mark. <laughs> doing a few, uh, yeah, doing a few replays, which Did- is quite funny. But um no, he, he played really well I thought and it's exciting to have the two brothers playing. Did you uh, let him know that because he, he really had a chance to seal the game after he took that brownie mark and he absolutely shelled the kick out left? Have you let him know about that? Yeah, it was one of the biggest anti climaxes of all time. <laughs> yeah, he, he reckons he couldn't, but he couldn't nearly hold the ball. He was that nervous, but um, he wasn't the only one. I think Big O shanked one as well, and um, yeah, we, we weren't kicking too well there at the end, and we were pretty lucky. Yeah, mate, you gave, a, you gave a couple off. Normally, you're the one snagging the goals. You gave away one to Charlie, gave away one to Lockie. What are you doing with that? Yeah, I don't know. I probably should have kicked that one. I gave the Charlie in hindsight, running straight to the open goal, but um, just sharing the love a little bit. Got to, <laughs> got to keep Charlie sharing up and about. <laughs> is, that, is that the game plan? Just keep the, keep the forwards, just keep them happy, keep them kicking goals. Smiles on their faces means it's a little bit easier in the, in the clubhouse afterwards. Yeah, I reckon that's the go, especially with Charlie. When he when he gets on a bit of a run and gets a bit of momentum, you can't really stop him. So I think but he was playing, um, ba- singing Baby Shark out on the ground, <laughs> with himself, which is pretty funny. But it's it's quite odd um, with no crowd because you hear everything that everyone says. So in between the goals, you hear all the sledging and you hear Mitch Rubber on the wing getting into blokes and some of the stuff that gets said is actually pretty funny, So um, which you don't usually hear when there's a crowd. Does it take you back to Warnable? Like, is it take you back to like that country footy vibes where everyone can hear everything? Like coaches going from the sideline because Fags is down on the bench, so he's just shouting at, at you now. Like everyone can hear everything. Yeah, it, it is a little bit like country footy. It, it's even weirder because, at, well, when you play local footy, you've usually got everyone standing along the bar yelling abuse, and you've got a little bit of atmosphere, but it's just dead quiet out there. Yeah. Um, you can hear the you can hear the commentators. <laughs> um, up in the boxes and we, we were actually quite lucky yesterday we had at Brizzy all the high rises um, around the oval so there was people set up on them and oh, there was a few, oh, few oh, firing calls late and you could hear some uh, yeah some explicit language being thrown <laughs> from the balcony, which, is, That's which is good that is very good who's, uh, who's King Sledger of Freo does Fife give a bit of stick oh who was nah Sonny Walters is um pretty up and about it he's a bit like Chucky they just they're just cheeky and um 
yeah, they like to let you know they're going pretty well. But <laughs> there's, there's a few guys like that. What Whenever they, someone kicks a goal, they get up and about. What are they like when they're not going well? Just silent as a church mouse? <laughs> oh, yeah, there's not as much carry on from our forward line when they're not going well. It's <laughs> pretty quiet down there, but they, as soon as they kick a couple, it's back up and about. It ebbs and flows a little bit. Yeah, nice. So then back to the grindstone now for West Coast next week. Yeah, yeah, they'll be out to to um, improve on their performance on the weekend. So we're looking forward to it at the Gabba again, which is nice. Yeah, you must be pumped with that kind of setup early on. Queensland back to back. You don't have to go anywhere. Beautiful. Yeah, it's perfect. Get to get to uh, live at home and enjoy this nice weather up here in the winter. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So have you th- we'll try and make the most of it. Have you thought about t- talking to a few of the few of the local vendors around where West Coast and Frio are staying? Just go a little bit of Michael Jordan Last Dance. Send him a little dodgy pizza or something like that just to make it a little bit easier for you. Nick Nat might need one. Yeah, I thought oh, Nick Nat loves a pizza. <laughs> yeah. No, no, we are. Nothing like that going on. Well, Jacko Pryor lives with us and his old man's a coach for Frio. So got a little bit inside word from him. But Very good. Um, no, nah, it's, all, it's all good fun. <laughs> he just said, coach from the other team, yeah, he told us what to do. It's fine. There'll be no repercussions. It'll be fine. And now you've just got yeah. to live with Tommy Berry for the next week. Yeah, exactly right. Taking screamers all over the house. Yeah, awesome, mate. That is fantastic. Thanks for joining us, Huey, our first guest, and will probably be the best footballer we have on this podcast ever. So how good. <laughs> As said by Adam. Nah, but you'll always be easy. the statue. No worries about that. <laughs> always there. Thanks, mate. Thanks, good luck you. for next week. Appreciate you, mate. Perfect. Thanks, guys. It's time for the coveted award where we find out who's been doing it all day. Who are you going to start with, Adam? My who's been doing it all day, and we talked about him a bit before. Wait, we probably should clarify what the he's been doing it all day weekly award is for. Yeah. It's basically just our favourite player of the week. Yeah. <laughs> favourite, <laughs> no, player, personality, umpire, it could be anyone. Could be journalist, could yep. be anyone involved in the ASFL, AFL sphere, which includes us now because we've got a podcast. Yep. He's been doing it all day. I don't know if you've heard about it. <laughs> like, um, five stars. Five stars, subscribe, unsubscribe, yep. resubscribe if you want. Leave a comment, say that we've been doing all right. So my, he, my he's been doing it all day, my who's been doing it all day is, we talked about him before, Matty Rao. Yeah. He just absolutely, for the redheads out there, <laughs> he was like Michael Voss. Did, did you get Michael Voss vibes? Michael Voss vibes. He had 26, Voss. 26 touches and two goals. He Without them, without Matt Rao, Gold Coast don't beat West Coast. Matt Rao has been doing it all day. Yeah, he did a very, He did it all day. Yeah. Matt Ray did it. Matt Rao did it all day. Yeah. And he's so big. Matt. Yeah. You don't need to be that big, bro. <laughs> like, what are you going to do in four years? You can't get bigger. You've already wrecked it. Do you know what he's done? He's gone too early. Like, it's like whenever you do a time trial, you always fudge the first one <laughs> so that the next one looks really good. Where are you going to go, Matt? Where are you going to go? True. They go, oh, he's put on a couple of kilos, been in the system for a while now. No, no, you turned up like that. Yeah, far out. He just got drafted and then went, oh, I'll have three months off in season and just become enormous. Yeah. Just drinking big M's every day. All right. My, he's been doing it all day. I mentioned him before. Gary Ablett Jr. Is it eating pies all day? No. Oh. It's, mate, Gary Ablett Jr. is a beast. He, he might is. be the goat. 36 years old. Yeah. Position change. He's like, all right, great. Going forward. Going to put on a bit. Harder to move. Still gets 21 touches, still kicks two goals, and just looks so much better than everyone else. Oh, don't he gets the footy and you go, oh, something good's going to happen here. It was ridiculous. Every yep. time he gets it, he's got Scott Pendlebury, a bit of Scott Pendlebury gene in that, like the world slows down around him. Mm-hmm. But then he's got the, oh, no, it slows down, and then I'll just do whatever I want, and no one's coming anywhere near. I don't. It's incredible. It's his, actually really enjoyable to watch. His first well, five steps are three steps quicker than anyone else. Yeah. If you needed someone to run to 40 metres on their own, kick a goal to save your life, who are you taking? Yeah, probably him. All time. Yeah. It probably, probably is Gary. Probably I've always said Gary. <laughs> yeah. From Which, anywhere. He doesn't miss. From anywhere. Like, put him on the boundary. It doesn't matter. He's got that little instinct. He holds swing. the footy a little bit straight up too. A lot like, of good kicks too, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, he holds it almost a bit more north south, like or sky sky ground. Because then he drops it straight down and kicks the ball from underneath Just him. Yeah. He's yeah. slicked. He's so slick. Yeah. And never gets tackled. Yeah. And no one can bring him to the ground. And now no one can get their arms around him. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Ablett has been doing it all day. Gary Ablett been doing it all day. Show 
Justin, I keep calling him just show. Sorry. We've got another podcast, everyone, called The Adam and Simon <laughs> Show. Justin also produces that, and on that one his name's Show. Yeah, but this one he's Justin. So Justin, Justin. So it's going to take some time. I think we can all agree we're far more enjoying this sort of <laughs> mode of operation. All right, Go tell us, it, who's been doing it all day? I'm going back to Metricon yep. because Ooh. what an absolute treat it was it last was. night. <laughs> it really was. Alex, big sexy, sexy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he is an absolute menace, and he has been doing it. All day. <laughs> <laughs> He's a gun. And the the best thing about last night was they sort of got a few goals ahead and they got a tails up. He wanted to fight everyone. <laughs> he wanted to fight McGovern, then McGovern threw he him in did. the fence. Yes. <laughs> and then he kicked it out of the fall, which wasn't great. But. Oh, that sucked. That was the worst part. He should have just like, then he could imagine how much he could have rubbed it in his face. And there was another one up for, And like, if that person's not on the team, you hate him. Like, yes. oh, yeah. You yeah, are yeah. the worst bloke in the world. Don't come near me. Do you know what I respect about him too? Is that he's now had a mustache for like three years. He's yeah. not one of these guys, oh, I'm just going to do a fashion mustache. Jeremy yeah. Cameron got a fashion mustache at the moment. He does. A couple others got a fashion mustache this guy I've got a cup fashion mustache yeah. right at the moment you've had that for a while like yeah. Alex Sexy Sexton he's been rocking it for a long time very he, um, he's a good player very Gold Coast sons of him too to get up and about oh, when you're winning yeah absolutely <laughs> that's why in the second quarter it was like they all sort of still looking around they're like you know what? we might actually do this and they started I, just getting real toey you know? he, none more so than Big Sexy I, like I reckon it. Big Sexy Sexton would have spent a fair bit of time down Cavalav on the Gold oh, Coast as well mate, he's been done some serious damage at shooters I reckon bedroom <laughs> bedroom for sure he's been a bedroom <laughs> <laughs> what's it like playing the Gold Coast yeah not bad <laughs> yeah, not bad we were saying this because they've all been in lockdown do you reckon they've they can't go to Cav Lab and play no. up. So they've all been like, you know, while we're here, we might as well try and play footy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First game back, <laughs> win by eight goals against the bloody <laughs> Hey, boys, I reckon there's something in this. <laughs> Without a doubt. They go, turns out, oh, we're actually all really high draftees. We're all really talented. Maybe we should try. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> he's actually a Queensland boy too. He's a, a he's from yeah, he Logan. Is. Local. He is, Logan. Yeah. Yep, Logan in no, Queensland. Yeah, I said, like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex Sexy Sexton, you have been doing it all day, my friend. All Big right. Sexy. Three yeah, boys. Oh, that was good. So basically that segment is the boys just pick who they want. Yeah. And it doesn't, just talk about them. You don't because happy. Sexy Sexton only had 14 touches for the day. No. He didn't necessarily play the best game out there, unlike the other two members of the, the award yep. this week. But it just show, goes to show you can be doing whatever you like all day and you'll get noticed. He's a menace. And two noms early. From the same team. Extraordinary. Coast. From the worst team. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Actually, yeah, right. that's Carlton. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is okay. very much yeah. uh, that is very much Carlton. Yeah. All right, that's it for this week of He's Been Doing It All Day. And make sure you subscribe and comment, review, five stars only, write whatever you like. But make sure you subscribe and, importantly, tell your mates about He's Been Doing It All Day. The Instagram handle is at been doing it all day tune in next week we'll be back again for more recaps interview spicy takes and the coveted award he's been doing it all day